Hi guys, welcome to our chapter of mining in Colorado history. So this is actually what a man named William Russell yelled to his friends one day in May 1858. He and 12 of his friends were panning for gold in Colorado and at the bottom of his pan he saw flakes of gold. He was so excited. Russell actually wasn't the first person to discover gold in this area, but the other discoveries were pretty small, so they didn't get much attention. But Russell's discovery was very, very different. Over two weeks, he and his friends found more and more gold in the sand near the river where they were panning. And at one spot, they found about four to $10 of gold each day. And that probably doesn't sound like a whole lot of money, but during that time, it was. So that $10 in 1858 is equal to about $314 today. Can you imagine finding that much, you know, that amount of gold sitting in your pan? He was thrilled, I'm sure. So that was enough to convince others that they had to come to Colorado to get rich. So the news of gold spread really quickly. Explorers and trappers and traders went and visited the miners and then they took those gold flakes back east with them when they went home. And this is actually what our country looked like at the time. Um, these areas, this is a pink shade, those are all states. And if you look here, all those yellow areas, those are territories. So they haven't become states yet. And Colorado would be right around here. So Colorado wasn't even a Colorado at the time. It wasn't a state. In fact, if you look closely, we're owned or we're in Kansas territory. So. These explorers took their gold flakes back home, back east, and showed everybody. And the discovery of gold was all over newspapers. It created what was called gold fever in hotels and stores and on street corners. That was all everyone could talk about was this gold and how you had to get there. You were gonna, you were gonna become so rich if you can get out west, pan for gold and, and find your nugget. Um, so people called this area the Pikes Peak Gold Region since Pikes Peak was the only landmark that they knew about. Now remember, you know, there's really not much out here at the time. All they knew about was that massive peak that had been discovered and named Pikes Peak. So the result of all of this excitement was the Pikes Peak Gold Rush of 1859. Thousands of men spent their life savings prepping for their trip out west. They bought pans and pickaxes and shovels and tents. And then they put all of those supplies in a wagon. Sometimes they had Pike's Peak or Bust written on the side of their wagon and they headed out west. They followed the trails that had been left behind by Native Americans and by other explorers and, and trappers. Because remember, there are no roads at this time, just the trails left by people who had explored this area in the past. So when the first men arrived, of course, they would have expected to find gold nuggets in every stream because that's all they had been hearing about. But instead, when they got here, all they saw were these small log cabin towns and men just standing around. Well, that really shocked them because if you come here expecting to find gold, you also expect to find men busy panning for gold and working. And that's not what they found. So what had happened was that the men that had, who had arrived earlier had actually panned and taken out all of the gold that were in the streams. So these new men, well, and the men that, had, that were now there were only earning a few cents a day. Remember that the first man was earning about four to $10 a day. Now it's down to about just cents a day. So these newcomers thought that they had been humbugged, and that's the word that they had used, humbugged, which actually means to be misled. So they were upset and disappointed because they had sold everything that they had earned just to come out here to make some money. And there was nothing to be made now. So they packed everything up and they headed back east. Well, around this time, there was a man named George Jackson and he had actually already been spending some time in California. California during this time is actually a state. And before that, they had had really great success with their own mining, the California Gold Rush. 
Well, when he was out there mining, he had discovered that the gold found in rivers actually comes from the veins in mountains. So if you can picture a mountain, inside of those mountains are veins, kind of like what you and I have in our body. And within those veins is gold. And so what happens over time is that you've got these mountains and maybe they start to erode due to you know land shifting or, or weather, and the gold in those veins becomes exposed. Well, due to rain and, and snow and, and just gravity, that those gold flakes start to kind of come down from that mountain. They may get stuck in streams in the high country, and then those streams, it kind of moves the gold down, down river. And that's where these men were finding all these gold, these gold flakes. Well, George Jackson thought when he arrived in Colorado, I'm not gonna mine or pan for gold in these rivers on the plains. I'm actually gonna head to the high country because that's where the gold is anyway. So he started panning for gold in the rivers closer to the mountains. And one day, he found a giant gold nugget. He didn't tell very many people about this. He only told a few of his close friends and they decided to stake a claim. And stake a claim means to say that this is my area. I am saying this is my area. I'm gonna mine in this area. Nobody else can mine in that area. It was kind of a first come first serve basis on actually tomorrow when you get into the textbook or, or the chapter on page 195 there's a, a section at the top of the page that talks a little bit more about staking a claim it's pretty interesting there's some do's and some don'ts about staking a claim all right so he and his friends staked a claim and they mined it or they panned there for a, about a week and when he took that gold to Denver City to see how much it was worth, he found out that he had made $1,900. Today, that is about $59,000. That's a ton of money. Again, remember, the first person was making about four to ten dollars. He made it. He made. Um, $1,900 and that was only seven days worth of work. So he made a huge discovery by discovering that the gold came from the veins in the mountains. All right, so that's actually how mining got its start in Colorado. We have a huge history of mining in our, in our state. It is fascinating and we're gonna start studying it the next, these next three weeks. Tomorrow, when you get back on, there's going to be a link to a PDF for your mining chapter that came straight from our Discover Colorado book. We are only tomorrow going to focus on placer mining and hard rock mining. So getting an understanding of the two types of mining that was done here in Colorado. There's gonna be a lot more to that chapter, but I'm gonna hold you off. Don't go, go, don't go any farther than the placer mining and hard rock mining. We have a ton to learn about over the next three weeks. I hope you are just as excited as I am to learn more about our state and mining in our state.